What's going on everyone out there in YouTube land? So today we're going to have a look at a very interesting and unique RDA. This one coming from Steel Vape or Steel Vape Tech. This is the Compass RDA at the moment sitting on top Dominican 2 Kodama. I got a dual fuse Clapton coil in here vaping on some delicious apple juice. Yes, a juice that I reviewed a long time ago. Um, I'm actually vaping it again. We're going to talk about it really quick. Uh, but first, uh, 90 watts on this dual coil. Let's have a vape. Mmm. The best. The best apple juice vape ever created. So today's liquid is coming from ejuicedirect.com. I'll have links posted in the description. And this liquid I reviewed a while ago. Long time ago, loved it. It was my favorite out of their line. And I don't do apple vapes really that much, but this one is a clean, crisp apple juice. Probably one of the best apple juices I've ever had. This one coming from Snap Liquids, and it's called Apple. If you like just a clean apple juice taste, this one is, oh, this nails it. It's perfect. Um, they also offer a raspberry apple. Wasn't really a fan of that one, but this, just a straight apple, it's been around for a while, so I'm pretty sure most of you have tried it by now, but if you're looking for that straight apple juice flavor, this is it right here. Uh, 036 milligrams, price tag at eJuice Direct, $17.99 with a coupon code VAPENFAGAN. It gets it down to $12.99 for a 60 ml bottle. And as far as the VGPG ratio, I'm not too sure. Uh, I think it's an 80 twop. It's a 90 10. There we go. 90 10. So, yeah, if you're into the apple thing and you're looking for a really clean apple, this is the one to get. Now, the Compass RDA was sent over directly by Steel Vape for the purpose of this review. If you guys are looking to pick one up or check one out, or if you're a shop looking to pick one up for your store or your website, I will have a link to their website in the description. Now, vendors currently at the moment don't have these in stock. There are a few vendors that will have them. Once they have them in stock, I will update the description with some links. I did ask Steel Vape, what's the retail price going to go for? They told me anywhere between $35 and $45. So before I talk any more about it, let's dive down. Let's have an up-close look at this really interesting post design that Steel Vape has come up with. And I don't think anyone's done it before, at least nothing that I've checked out before. But we're going to check it out. We're not going to do a build, but I will show you the build I've been using. And we'll talk about building on it. And then we'll come back up, do some pros and cons, and then wrap it all up. Checking out the package design for the Compass RDA comes in a pretty standard cardboard box on the back, contents of the box, authenticity sticker, and then on the front it actually shows you the color options it's available in, red, black, blue, and green. Inside the box you're going to get the Compass RDA. This has the aluminum cap with the Ultim drip tip. They're also going to include a stainless steel cap with a stainless steel drip tip. This pretty interesting multi-tool which has a Phillips head, flat head, and a coiling bit on one end. Some extra O-rings, and then a little kind of a user manual, but more of a parts list. Dimensions, we're looking at 25 millimeters in diameter from the bottom to the top of the drip tip, 33 millimeters tall. They do include an Altum 810 or Goon style drip tip. So this one will work with all your 810 Goon Apocalypse Reload drip tips. They do not include a 510 drip tip adapter. So it's going to be Goon style only on this one. You'll notice the O-ring located at the top. And on the stainless steel cap, they're going to include an 810 stainless steel drip tip. Once again, same style, O-ring located on the top. Now, as you can tell, they do include two top caps with the compass. You're going to get an aluminum top cap with an anodized finish. And with the aluminum cap, you have the option of running either single coil or dual coil. You could actually close off one of the air holes. And the air holes on the aluminum cap measure 8 millimeter by 2 millimeter. Airflow control ring is nice and tight, but still easy to adjust. Now, if you're using the stainless steel top cap, you only have the option for dual coil. We don't have airflow control, so the air holes are wide open. 
and the air holes on the stainless steel one are going to be 10 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter and you'll notice if you look really close the air slots are beveled a little bit on the stainless steel cap at the bottom we do have design and manufactured by steel vape in the center we have a non-adjustable gold-plated 510 pin that does stick out far enough to safely use on a hybrid connection and of course we have the phillips head screw to access the negative post now the blue top cap once again is made of aluminum anodized aluminum very nice machine work on the aluminum no sharp edges it is a little thin but you kind of expect that with the aluminum and you'll notice on the aluminum cap we have these uh i'm not sure they're just kind of milled out holes the holes don't go all the way through they're kind of just milled about a few millimeters deep into the top cap it's supposed to improve flavor but i'm not too sure exactly what it does and the anodizing is very nicely done. It does hold up in an ultrasonic cleaner very well. And the stainless steel cap, of course, is a one-piece cap. Once again, no sharp edges. Holes are cut out nice and smooth. So the most interesting feature of the Compass RDA is going to be the build deck. I have not seen anything like this before. So this is something really, really different. I did measure 22 millimeters internal diameter on the build deck. As you can see, all gold plated. We do have these two large flathead knurled thumb screws for the post screws. And you can tighten them up either with your fingers or you can use a flathead screwdriver. Very, very large post screws. And we have a clamp design. So as you see here, as I loosen up the post screw, the clamp opens up. You feed your wire into the clamp and then you tighten it down the clamp openings when they're fully opened i measured around two millimeters each you could still fit some pretty thick gauge wire in there of course we have the very large peak insulator in the center and that is a huge insulator we're going to test that in a moment i did measure the juice well to be roughly around 5.5 millimeters deep and then along the side we do have a single o-ring that holds the top cap in place and we have this little dimple right here and what that does is that prevents the top cap from spinning and it also perfectly aligns the air hole with the coil and also when you're adjusting your airflow control on the aluminum cap it prevents the barrel section from spinning so when you take your cap pop it on there line up the little cutout right about there and it does take a little breaking in but once you break it in it has a nice nice tight fit so we're not going to do a build on the compass but i'm going to show you guys the one that i've been using now a few things about this one it's really super easy to build on especially because the post openings are so close together your five and six wrap coils will slide in perfectly. There's no need to try to bend your leads. You don't need to make a really long coil. Also, you'll notice, of course, the peak insulator is right here. So with that said, you don't wanna mount your coil too close to that insulator because of course you're going to melt it. Even though peak can withstand a lot of heat, if you pulse your coil red hot, you will melt the insulator. So for instance, I have a 2.5 inner diameter coil here. And as you can see, I got it pulled away from the insulator and I got it out as far as possible before it starts touching the sidewalls of the top cap. Because this post design takes up so much space in the build deck, you're kind of limited when it comes to coil diameter. Just keep in mind when building on this, you don't want to pulse your coils red hot because if you clean or pulse your coils and you start glowing them, you're gonna end up melting the insulator. Now, if you look down in there, you could see I did kind of burn the insulator a little bit. I've been using this build for over a week and I re-wick it probably twice a day. So I've been dry burning these coils twice a day and I've been purposely glowing them red hot just to see if I can really melt this insulator. 
and as you can see there there is a little black on the insulator it did melt not really melt but it does have some black spots on it so I could have probably prevented that by not dry burning it so hard now the way I recommend doing it is when you install your coils just push them up against the post like so just finger tighten the screws take your coiling rod and then you can pull the coils out away from the insulator like so and then once you get them far enough out go ahead take a flathead screwdriver and tighten them down so that's pretty much going to be it guys for the up close and personal let's jump back up and let's have a vape all right so we're still at 90 watts let's have a vape Mmm, a really, really delicious vape. So let's go through some of the pros and cons, and we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go through them. Pro number one is going to be the build quality. The edges, nice and smooth. The air holes are cut out nice and even. The gold plating, the tight O-rings, the anodizing on the top cap, the stainless steel, everything. Very nice quality, really nice job they did here. I got a few products from Steel Vape and I reviewed a few products by them and a lot of their products have really nice build quality to them. So even though they're somewhat of a new company, I think they do a really good job when they build their products. So overall, thumbs up on the build quality. The next pro, we're gonna give it to the build deck. The build deck is unique, it's different. I've never seen it done before. And those extra large like thumb post screws, um, really easy to build on. I like the way the post holes are kind of close together so you don't need to bend your leads out or make really long coils. Overall, I think aside from that extra large peak insulator in the center, I really love the build deck on here. It's really different and it actually works well. So thumbs up for that. The next pro is gonna be the vape. Really good flavor off this thing. It actually puts out a really good vape. The airflow, depending on the cap you're using, if you're using the aluminum cap, you can get a little bit more of a restrictor vape. You, you still get a lot of airflow off of it, but if you want maximum amount of airflow, I would go with the stainless steel cap. But the aluminum cap gives you the option of tightening off the airflow and also running it in single coil mode. So the overall vape experience has been really good on this RDA. The next pro are going to be the two top cap options. They give you the anodized aluminum, and they give you the stainless steel. So once again, kind of ties in with the previous pro, but you get the option of running single or dual coil, tightening off the airflow, and having you know a little bit better look with the colored anodized option. Or you can run the stainless steel cap, which gives you you know maximum airflow. You don't get the airflow control ability, and you don't get the single coil option, but it is nice to include two separate caps with two different drip tip options, so we will give it a thumbs up for that. And the last pro is one thing that I actually didn't like when I first got it. When I first started using this, I actually did not like this whole kind of like interlocking top cap thing right here with the little notch right there. I didn't like it, but after my O-ring kind of broke in a little bit, I actually really enjoy that locking feature because when I go to adjust my airflow, the barrel section doesn't spin on me and also when I pop the top cap on I don't need to sit there and kind of line up the air hole with the coil I can just take the coil or take the cock cap cock cap cap yeah can't talk just pop it on and I usually just spin it until it kind of grabs that little that little notch and then I just push down it does take a few days for the o-ring to break in it is a little tight when you first take it out of the box but once you break it in it actually is a nice tight fit so let's talk about some of the cons first con is going to be the peak insulator we've seen other atomizers like this with the large peak insulator right in the center near the coils and if you're not careful you will melt the insulator now i've been using this for over a week and i've been purposely dry burning it uh, red hot to kind of see how bad it would melt that insulator and you guys seen any up close It did get burnt a little bit a little bit But if you're careful if you don't glow your coils bright red it will last But if you're hard on it if you dry burned a lot, you're gonna melt it. So yeah, I'm not too sure 
how they would have avoided that. Um, I don't see any other way they could have done that, but yeah, the insulator being right there and with the deck being so cramped, it will melt if you're not careful. So we're gonna give it a con for that. Just remember, be careful and you should be good. The next con is going to be, kind of ties in with the first one, but they should have included an extra peak insulator uh, just in case down the road you do melt it or something happens over time. It would have been nice to have a spare on the side and they don't give you no extra post screws either. I don't think you really will need them, but it would have been nice to get one extra screw um, and the insulator in the kit. So we will give it a con for that. And the last con is going to be the cramped build deck. Now the build deck, not so much the design, but it reminds me a little bit of the Goon LP. You know how the Goon LP, how the, the build deck takes up most of the juice well and the, the build space, and you can't fit really big coils in there because those posts just take up so much space. That's kind of how this is here. We have a 25 millimeter RDA uh, with a 22 millimeter build deck, but because those posts are so big and that insulator is in the center, you're kind of limited on your coil size. So 2.5 for me, I found to be the biggest. Of course, you could fit a three in there, but you're gonna get even closer to the insulator. So I recommend 2.5, who knows, maybe I'll even try a two millimeter in here, but yeah, build space is kind of cramped. So that's pretty much gonna be it guys for the pros and cons. And at the end of the day, you know, I do give Steel Vape a thumbs up for being unique and different. Hopefully it doesn't come back and kick me in the ass and someone says, hey, there was an RDA that was made in 2004 in the Philippines that had the same build deck. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but I haven't seen anything done like this before and it works. It does work, it does make it much easier to build. It does make it so you can do kind of unique different builds like vertical and horizontal, um, but you gotta be careful with it. You just gotta be careful and if you don't mind being careful with it, it's a good RDA, performs well, puts off a really good vape, it's constructed really well, but just that peak insulator, you gotta watch out, because if you melt it, that's it, you're done with it. So yeah, that's it guys, that's all I got for you today. If you have any comments or questions on the compass, please feel free to leave them below. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to everyone very, very soon. Make sure you guys build safe and vape on.